Hi, welcome to the Mac Show. Yes, we're here to discuss all the big shiz that's gone on in the Apple world, everything that could have possibly happened and hasn't happened yet and might still happen. And there might be some rumors in here, but that's lucky because Doc's not here yet. He's still sleeping. And uh, Adam has had a, a little thing that he's got to disappear on and go and do. Uh, best of luck with that, mate, because um, uh, he's told us what it is and we're not telling anyone else. No, no, no. Um, joining me to discuss the week in Apple, um, a, a brilliant pair, actually. <laughs> 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 I leave it to the listeners to decide what pair we actually are. <laughs> pair of. But oh, I, know. I mean, is it Pinky and Brain, for example, or is it Dumb and Dumber, or what is it? I mean, is there's it so many dumber? options. Dumber, easy. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Uh, starting us off, Patrice. Hey, what are you doing, man? <laughs> Um, I think actually I'm doing quite good. I mean, crazy week, but the weather is getting better and better. Summer's coming, and I can't wait for uh, the bash. Yeah, now you're really? coming to the bash. Yeah, coming. We'll be flying in on Thursday, so. You're in on the we'll Thursday, right? Okay. Well, you, yes, we'll, we'll be fun. You can stay at my mate. Don't don't book a hotel. Yeah, we already talked about that. Yeah, so um, so that's right. no problem at all. Um, uh, brilliant. Pick you up on the Thursday then. Golf on the Friday. You coming around the golf course? Yeah, of course. I mean, I probably will not be playing golf because I've never done it, but we'll I get, will enjoy a nice walk we'll get, around the we'll course. Get a, we'll get a couple of carts so that we can drive around. Yeah. And you can be in charge of the beer. Hey. That's a great idea. Spot on. Yeah, it's an awesome idea. I will do that. I've got only the thing is that this is the thing that really pisses me off about this network, right? I, I set everything up and it all runs smooth as silk. Last week we got five people on and we got perfect lip sync on Adam. This week Patrice is like forty-five seconds delayed. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> this is it. Skype line's forty-five seconds delayed, and it can't be me because there's nothing. Ah, oh. and the Phantom Blipper last week. No idea. Apologies, but no idea. Yeah, no blips this week. Right, here we go. For the first time ever, achieving a goal that he's had for a long time, and he's only on because we're desperate. <laughs> <laughs> Muller. Uh, I, I want to thank my fans. My, uh, Both of them. Yeah, the people that wrote in demanding this to happen. Has my, has my microphone noticed? Yeah, it is on, yeah. I haven't held it close enough to my mouth. Uh, uh, anyway, thank you, fans, for... You know, the requests. Come on. Uh, right, the week in Apple, what's going on? The big news, uh, no blips this week. Oh, but, but hang on. <laughs> oh, we, oh, hang on. Uh, he's back. Patricia, right? Yeah. Yeah, just massively delayed. Um, Apple Pay <laughs> is officially released in Italy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in Italy, not in Germany. I'm, I'm telling you, it will, it will be really, I mean, it will be available in, uh, in, in the Philippines before it's in Germany. We talked about that. I mean, you reckon? You reckon? Yeah. What yeah. did you I'm, do? I'm positive about that. What did you do to, to I don't know. Tim Cook's know. family in history? Because Cook's yeah. not exactly a Jewish name or anything, and it's not, no. you, you know, I don't know. What have you done to Tim Cook to piss him off so badly in Germany that you're even below Italy? I mean, the cowards of the Second World War, and you're oh, still no, below no, them. No, no, no. I mean, we are we are behind the French even, so. <laughs> don't get me started on the French. Yeah. I don't know what we did. I mean, I, I haven't done anything. I mean, don't know. <laughs> I love this. Someone, someone must have, must have said something, something bad to Tim Cook. Ruat says Muller sounds a bit distant because he's got shit mic technique. It's got nothing to. He's there. Look, see if he puts it to his mouth, we can hear him. If he doesn't, we can't. No blips this week, Paul. No. You're gonna get. Are you gonna get Apple Pay, mate? Come on. Yeah, in about twenty years. Twenty or years. so. That's it. I used it twice today. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Yeah. The only the only German with Apple Play is Jerome, who's in Hawaii. <laughs> 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 that's, oh, that's, that's Apple so Pay. There's Muller's card number if you need it. Is it? Yeah. If you just if you, oh, yeah. you slow down and blow it up, there you go. That's it. You can get it. 
so we only did that story. We're not going to talk that story. We only did it to piss off Patrice. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, next one. Uh, Wired has been inside the Apple campus. Now then, uh, there's behind the scenes views of the Apple campus and also stories of its inception. Uh, mm -hmm. What happened to get it through planning permission and all that kind of stuff with the local council. Um, uh, use of, of creativity pods and social pods and working pods and uh, other pods that Steve envisaged and a whole layer of what's going on where. And found, in fact, only eight things are apparently going on inside uh, the new <laughs> Apple campus according to Wired. Um, and there's some absolutely stunning quotes here, really, really stunning quotes. The, my favourite is right at the bottom, um, which is um, a question to Johnny Ive, which says, this might be a stupid question, but what do you need a four-storey glass door for? Ive raised an eyebrow and said, well, he says, um, it depends how you define need, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't want to say because we can. Because we can, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And apparently that four-story glass door has been patented, so uh, yeah. there you go. But, uh, that, that was, I mean, the, the whole article, it's really, really interesting. And I mean, I would, if, if you haven't read it, I would recommend doing it because there, there were some really cool bits in there. But the, the whole thing with these glass doors, I mean, they are insane. What, what did they say how, I mean, how heavy they are? A couple of hundred thousand tons or a couple of hundred tons at least? <laughs> no, the whole building's only Not a hundred thousand, thousand no, tons. probably more, a couple of hundred tons. But still, I mean, this is, that's insane. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've built a, an office which is akin to the original spaceship in the original Independence movie. <laughs> yeah. And they're worried about a couple of doors. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, uh, Steve Jobs' in, in, uh, input into this apparently started in 2004. Uh, they got Norman Foster in in 2009, and apparently meetings with Norman Foster used to last up to five or six hours, consuming a significant amount of time in the last two years of Jobs' life. Jobs was so deeply into the project that he even knew at what time of the year he wanted the wood for the campus to be cut. <laughs> You got the wood. Oh, mate, that's that's the definition of control freak right there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, to be honest, I'm not surprised. Everything, I mean, just everything we've ever heard about Steve Jobs and, I mean, how intense he could be, not, not to say control freak. Um, yeah, it's not surprising. And then the project at this scale is, I mean, yeah, it takes a lot of time. It's not as easy as building a small house. It, it is impressive. I mean, if you look at the scale yeah. of that last image that I put up there, compared to you sat on the roof there, and I'm aware this is wide angle, so things that are off further away look an awful lot further away. But if you look at the relative scale of what's going on there, that's like there are a lot of municipal parks in, mm. that there are several acres that 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 space there in the centre they'd fit in several times over. That is a massive space in the center of it. How big is the entire the entire uh, plot they have there? Oh, I don't, I don't Was it 18 or, or 18 acres or something like that? Oh. Or 70 something? Uh, so I've been to work, I, I did work on a site that was owned by the Royal Mail, which was 23 acres. And mm -hmm. I, I, looking at the scale of that, I would say that's times, many times that. I don't okay. know what it is. I mean, I, I simply, it, it was in the article. I, I can't remember what it was. Uh, I can't remember reading it, but um, a chat room, feel free to uh, to tell us uh, what the uh, what the acreage is of the Apple campus. Yeah. But like I say, I've, I've been on a 23-acre site for work before, <laughs> so and it, yes, it was massive. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, for me, the most surprising thing about, well, I mean, what was revealed in that article was that Apple actually saved some money <laughs> during construction by basically not building as many underground parking spaces as they had originally planned. So that was the big money saver basically. on the on the project that, I mean, according to rumors, is like five billion or something. Uh, it's 75 acres, that's more than uh, So it was 70 something, crazy, I mean. It says, um, it says... 71 hectare, 175 acres. No, 75 acres. That's what you put in there, yeah. You, that's your link. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. well, well, 2,800,000 square feet, 
Mm -hmm. uh, which is two tw for, for Patrice is two hundred sixty thousand square meters. So it's. Cheers. <laughs> 2,600 square metres, Jobs wanted the whole campus to look like it's an office park and yeah. like a nature refuge. No, it looks like a spaceship from the from Independence Day. It actually does. There, I think there were some some issues or some things they, they talked about, whether this, this space and this park nature of this whole thing would separate the, uh, the Apple employees too much from the city. I mean, because you're basically living or work, living and working in the middle of a forest, and in, in a spaceship. In a spaceship, so that that seems to have been an issue. Uh, the square footage is only the floor area of the inside. Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh. uh, Tim Cook spotted wearing a, uh, a, a glucose monitor. This is now. This was outed a few weeks ago when he went to a school in Glasgow and he said, "Yeah, I've been wearing a glucose monitor around the Apple campus for the last few weeks." Um, and then apparently this has resurfaced now that he's been seen wearing it and uh, he's got it on. It doesn't say whether it's internal to the watch or external to the watch, mm -hmm. but um, uh, he's been wearing one. Is he diabetic? Because I didn't know that he was. No idea. No, I mean, you can, you can check your glucose even if you're not diabetic. Well, apparently that's the thing is that the big, the big, um, the big fad in California at the moment is to have a low carb but very high fat diet and just cut out the sugars. And mm -hmm. uh, apparently this makes you more productive and more um, shebang the, through the working day. So <laughs> more shebang. Yeah, more shebang. Yeah, and I mean, didn't didn't I read somewhere that uh, Tim Cook actually lost some weight over, or did he? I think he mentioned it somewhere. Thirty pounds, he told. Yeah. Matters, so yeah. maybe it's working. I don't know that the the diet is necessarily meant to topple weight from you, other than it's supposed to make you feel better when you eat that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, yep. Uh, I can't. Well, I can't remember where I read it. But the other thing is, I, I did try and find out whether whether uh, Tim Cook's diabetic or not, and I, I couldn't. Just, mm -hmm. I can't find that. Just well, because all it does is refer you to the glucose monitor yeah. story. <laughs> so, yeah, I've just done that, and that's what I've got back. But from, from mm -hmm. what I've read about it, it isn't invasive. It, it doesn't take blood, so I don't know how it works. Um, I can't see how it would work. But I mean, Patrice. Well, well there, there was a couple of years ago. There's even I think a patent in the UK, or I think it was I think it was from from a company in the UK, uh, who had patented uh, that type of device, basically. So, uh, as far as I know, it seems to be possible. The question, or that the the issue was more that it's not reliable, or it wasn't at that point reliable enough, and and everything. But I mean, that was a couple of years ago, so. Given Apple's money and I mean simply talent pool and and everything, I, I think they they could have solved that issue. It still doesn't say in any of the uh, articles I've found. No, it's I mean it's it's a rumor. It's nowhere mentioned whether it's invasive or not. Basically. Wait, well, doesn't this one article say it's non-invasive? Wait, well, just doesn't okay. say how it's doing it. But, um, I, I know you can do some rudimentary checks without um, taking blood. But they're not accurate. Uh, yeah. Um, my wife's diabetic, so I know an awful lot about this subject. Mm. Um, uh, but I don't see how they could do an accurate test without taking blood. But it remains to be seen, doesn't it? Well, uh, is it meant to be accurate so more than just in terms of trending? Because the thing is, with, I mean, you, your wife is diabetic, mm. um, and and you're more worried about the trend of her reading rather than the accuracy of her reading. If you mm. if you've got a high when it's a high and a low when it's a low, if you see it moving between the two, the you're not responding got... to point references, are you? You're responding to generals. Well, the trouble is, my wife's got to the point now where uh, blood sugar levels don't. When she was younger, um, I could. You could, she could rescue it herself because she'd have more warning. But mm. these days, it's like a cliff. She hits the cliff and then dump. It just gets mm. stone. But but the reading would be more gradual. It's just her response to it that's got more like a cliff. Well, I'm more. Oh, I just know when it's going to happen because I just notice the behavioural changes. That's <laughs> she making, shouts at you. Yeah, there is. That's one. <laughs> and also, she gets quieter and doesn't tell me to piss off. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, question from Deep Pan: Does this have to be medically accurate 
then it's got to go through a hell of a lot of regulation. So it might not be medically accurate. It might be just a trend analysis to to give a, a basis for response. But he, he has put he has put the link to the the a company I mentioned in the chat room. Glucowise is the, apparently the product, but it's still under development. No, so it seems to be possible. They 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 do make um, uh, monitors already because I've got one of those. So mm -hmm. the, the Glucowise thing f uh, fits between it, it's. Uh, if I took this this pen device here, they they it, the Gluco device fits like that between your your thumb and finger, and mm -hmm. it measures um, quite how I'm not entirely sure, but it doesn't look like it's invasive. The, the thing the thing is, I wonder if it takes because how the Gluco monitor I think works anyway is by when you put the blood on the strip, the strip changes colour, and then you could the, the machine re reads the colour. Mm -hmm. so I wonder if somehow they've developed it where. The machine can penetrate the skin without penetrating it. Sorry, you know, look through the skin, look into the blood veins, and pick up the different colour of the blood. I'm, I'm probably reaching a bit there. But. Well, the one thing that, that Cook has been quoted as saying is that it's a pain for people to be stuck regularly through the day. So stuck being, I guess, needle, yeah. which I guess is the mm -hmm. chunk meter that then gives you the drop of blood. So yeah. if people are doing that four or five times a day, then. If this thing's accurate enough to be able to replace that, that's got to be at the medical level that, that Deep Pan's yeah. talking about there. It is a pain because I, I was bet, I was borderline diabetic for a while, so I used to do it, and it, it is a pleasant. It mm. does look like that's what it's doing. If you look at if you look at it, it does look like it's shining maybe so through your skin and reading it. But I mean, this is the thing: is whether it's an extra device that Apple have made, which I can't see them making an extra device when someone's already doing it. Um, or whether this is something built into Apple Watch, in which case version three, Muller, we might be worth waiting for instead of keeping your cloudy withings up. You said I'm buying an Apple Watch. Yeah, you said you were <laughs> going to buy a three. You said you were going to buy a three. No, I said I'd look wait till the Apple three, uh, till the Watch three, because by mm. then it'll be out of beta by then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's interesting, actually, this week, we've had two people post, uh, Camps and, and Mark, have both posted in the, the Slack health room um, some results for a run that was very, very similar in terms of elevation and activity and distance and that kind of stuff, and co two completely different calorific readings on it. Um, uh, and the only difference is Camps is on a version 2 and uh, Mark's on a version 1, so it looks like the version 1 watch could be just a complete bag of shite, like I did mm. say all along. But That's what I keep saying. Could it be something the next AirPods? That's a that's a bit left field, but actually that's, that's not, not, that's not the ears a big place, isn't it? Yeah, good call. Yeah, a lot of blood vessels. It could be it could be a device that links to your Apple Watch that fits in your ear. Yeah, yeah. Because another thing I, I, with diabetics, you can tell from their skin, uh, the skin get changes, uh, temperature changes. So it could be something to do with temperature yeah. change, skin change. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which are all built into the watches. Uh, even the uh, the Williams I've got has got um, basic um, skin temperature um, sensors. Mm. <laughs> when it's not misted up. It's not misted up. Look. It's not. No, it's not misted <laughs> up at the moment. <laughs> Everyone, where were you yeah. when, when Muller's watch was not misted up? It's like the, it's like the shooting of Kennedy. I've already said it's a self-washing. It washes the screen for you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I've returned it again. <laughs> yeah. Only 179 quid. Thank you. That's the quote of the day. Uh, Google I.O. Assistant is here. Yes, you can get it for um, uh, your Apple device um, uh, on iOS. If you're in the US. In the US, yes. Have yeah. you got a US account though, Patrice? You have, haven't you? Yeah, I have one. Uh, but I haven't installed it simply because I don't care. But it's supposed to be, to be the best thing since sliced bread. It's going to be <laughs> killing Siri. I'm surprised that Adam, uh, I'm gutted that Adam's not here because he'd be going mental at this point. But Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every day something comes out that is going to kill something from Apple and it's a Siri killer. Yeah, it, I, I don't see it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for Google. Yeah, if Google has something that is great, a great assistant, because there are a couple of hundred million Android users out there and they deserve a good assistant. So I'm, I'm very happy that it came to the, uh, to the iPhone. Um, well, it's, it's a nice add on. I would say it's not necessary. I don't, I don't see this being really, really popular. 
uh, because most people will not install an extra app to have an assistant. They will simply use whatever comes. I mean, however good or bad it is, they will either either not use it at all or they will use whatever comes with the device. I mean, most people, a lot of people don't even install any apps. So why would they install this one? Yeah, I, mean, I, I want to try it. I'm desperate to try it because Siri is such a shit experience for me. Well, it... No, it is. I, 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 I'm, this for is not for me, you, yeah. I, want to I mean, clear. I've, I've seen not, you struggle with it, so I know it's, it is for you. Yeah, I want to be clear. It's, it's not me slagging off Siri. I'm not here to just pour uh, oil on the fire of, of anti siri it, it, mm-hmm. it is not a good experience for me. And that's the thing is when people go, I don't like Siri, it's crap. Everyone goes, no, it's fine. No, that it's a personal experience. And if you go mm-hmm. Siri's crap, it means Siri is crap for you. And that's yeah. all that matters with a personal assistant is the personal yes. element of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm sorry, Siri's shit. And it's shit yeah. for me. And um, there's loads of people listening who go, I think it's fine. It works yeah, just it's great fine for me. me. I cannot get it to work for me at all. And I haven't mm-hmm. got a broad accent. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would guess that my English accent is worse than yours, so <laughs> it's working fine for me. Does it work for you in German? Uh, or is there I no have German, never used Siri no in German. German. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it actually has. But no, I have, I, have, I have not once used it in German. The only issue I have is when I want to text someone in German, and I mean, Siri is English, so that doesn't work at all. No. I don't know what I, I I think I texted something weird to someone once. Can't remember what it was, but just, it was really just, weird. Just it just ones. sent it. Just the ones. Just the ones. Yeah. Drunk, usually I don't do drunk it. texting. Uh, no, no, wasn't even drunk. I was just simply somewhere in the supermarket getting some groceries and didn't have the time to take up my phone. Actually, no. That's the that's the interesting thing is if I say to it. How do I get to Bristol Parkway Station? It says, here's a list of cinemas near you. Um, <laughs> but if I say to it, uh, reply to Sharon's text, and I quote what it wanted to reply, it's actually pretty accurate then mm. at doing the text-to-speech stuff for the reply to the text. It's just the location stuff that really falls. That's got me thinking, actually, because I just say Siri shit, but actually when I've replied to text, it's been fairly accurate. But when I've done uh, uh, location stuff is when it's pretty crap. Uh, okay. Yeah. I need to expand my study. Oh yeah, I, I just checked. I sent no snitched. <laughs> <laughs> no snitched. I don't know why. I wanted to say noch nicht, which means not yet. <laughs> so that's that's not working. And and I mean, according to Apple, it should detect the language of the conversation and you should be able to switch languages, but it simply does not work. Right. So that part does not work for me. So hang on, let's just try this. So give me a phrase to say in German. I'll use my phone. Here's my phone. Yeah. I No, I can't say Siri, I love you, because I don't (laughs) for a start. But let me ask you a question about where is the nearest cinema? Uh, Where is the nearest movie theatre? Go on, Patrice. What do I say? Wo ist das nächste Kino? Wo ist das nächste Kino? Nächste Kino, ja. Yeah. Nächste Kino. Wo ist das nächste Kino? I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she doesn't do it. Voice that's not Kino. <laughs> <laughs> Wo ist das nächste Kino? <laughs> yeah, sure that's... Uh, so that's it, does, it doesn't detect languages then? Well, it should in text conversations. All oh, right. Okay. Hang on. So let me let me send Sharon a text. <laughs> so here we go. I'm opening text, and I'm gonna go. Voice das nicht the kino. And it said voice nick the kino. So it hasn't done that either. Uh, 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 <laughs> but but it got it hadn't done that either. Maybe you need to uh, install German keyboard or something. No, I mean, I, I just tried it and I, I asked the same question and it said, who is this Mr. Timo? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> nope, it does not work. Who is this Mr. Timo? There we go. <laughs> what, what are you talking about, fool? <laughs> <laughs> Siri, now ignoring you in two different languages. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's deep. Well done, deep. Deep. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm, that's today's title then. Siri now ignoring, Deep Hounds has said in the chat room, Siri now ignoring you in two different languages. <laughs> French, French, French. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and said overall, Siri is working for me. It's just, this. This is just the one thing where it, I mean, or where she completely messes up. Let's let's try just just for the sake of, of completeness. Let's try it in French. Siri, où est la bibliothèque? That may be beyond my abilities at the moment. <laughs> 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 Siri, who is la bibliothèque? Interesting question, Ewan. <laughs> Siri, she's put down Siri, who I love bibliothèque. <laughs> yeah, does not work. <laughs> it does not work in two languages. Three different languages. <laughs> now ignore you in three different languages. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I do get more chicken in restaurants, however, so it might not be just me. It might be everyone else. Not be everyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, a loyalty score for iPhones is 92%. Is that down? I, th I thought it was 98 or something. 92% of owners say that they are somewhat likely or extremely like they never understood somewhat likely you either are or you aren't make your mind up your fed sitting bastard yeah. um, somewhat likely or extremely likely to upgrade their smartphone in the next 12 months to a purchase plan on the iPhone according to investment investment bank Morgan Stanley Apple's loyalty rate is up from 86% a year ago to 92% okay. now based on 1,000 smartphone owners, owners aged between 18 aged over 18 so there you go <laughs> I mean, one that's not that's not even a representative group. So it's, I mean, it's, the data is probably shit anyway, but oh. 90, 98% or ni what was it? 92, 92%. Uh, it, it hit a 93% uh, in September 2015 when the iPhone 6X was launched. Yeah. People are happy with their iPhone, it would seem. And there was an interesting comment from Patrick Quirk in the in our Slack room who said, why do they call, um, why do they call Apple users sheep when actually the greatest quantity of, of people who own iPhones is Android users. And and I said that's a really good point because, you know, at least we've got the intelligence to follow the herd rather than being sold shit and treated like fungus. Um, <laughs> kept in the dark and sold bollocks. <laughs> Which is true because a lot of people that have an Android phone are because they've yeah. walked into the local shop and gone, I need a phone, mate. And they've gone, okay, I have this one. Oh, okay. okay. And walk out. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's true. It's it's not true for everybody, but I think you're overall you're probably right. I mean, how many moms and dads and so on just simply get sold whatever, whatever is whatever gets the best uh, or whatever is the best for the shop, not for the for your for is your mom or your dad. Is an iPhone a sale or is it a choice? Because uh, I think an Android is a sale. Well, I think it's a choice. Mine was a choice. I just bought this two weeks ago. Yeah. And. I broke the other one, and I must admit, I've been thinking of going Android for a bit, just to, you know, for a change. Yeah. But I'm so far into the Apple ecosystem now, I just thought, oh, it'll be such a pain. What was it? What was that thing? You remember? Have you seen the Da Vinci Code? Yeah. There's a there's a thing that's the guy wraps around his leg, just to prove to himself that he can. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A that sal change. A ceviche, that's yeah, it. Ceviche. Yeah. That's, so buying an Android ceviche. phone is like a friggin' ceviche. <laughs> I, I'm going to buy this thing. I'm going to buy this thing. I'm going to tighten it around my leg till my leg bleeds to the point that it fills me sock with blood, and that'll make me realise I should have bought an iPhone. I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm not so sure. I mean, <laughs> even even you, Muller, we are all somewhat tech, technic, tech savvy, tech people, whatever you want to call it. You speak. For so yourself. we are interested in trying something that's different, something that's new, and I think that's the lure for us. Uh, to try out Android. I mean, I've thought about it. I, I ultimately decided that it wasn't worth my time. Did you go to uh, confession? <laughs> no, I didn't. Forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. I have considered an Android. <laughs> I thought about Android. Well, no, to be fair, I looked at the Sony Xperia, the new one that's got the 960 frames per second video. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's doing 1080p at something stupid, isn't it? It's well beyond what my actual pro video camera is at 200 uh, frames per second. Yep. And there's a bit of me thinking, I, I could almost just buy that, uh, 
off brand, just no data card, just buy the lens, the camera to take around with me and shoot. Mm -hmm. You know, if I get an opportunist bit of video when I'm out on site, then it's perfect. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to link it, and, and is it going to replace my iPhone? And I've been off onto Windows, and I, I, I did jump from iPhone to Windows for the better camera, and it was the best move I've ever made because there was there was one project one particular summer where um, uh, I went out on site, and they said, "Oh, could, we want to put some pictures out on Twitter. How soon could you get some images up for us?" And basically, I was going out, taking a picture, emailing it straight from my phone to a group of people, and they were, they were really good pictures on the 1020 at the time. Mm -hmm. It was really good weather, so there was good light and that kind of stuff, which is also important. Um, and within 20 minutes, my pictures were going up on Twitter, on the London Underground account. Um, yeah. And it was kind of like, wow. And, and the guy that booked me said, uh, actually, I think the... Uh, uh, your Windows 1020 has been the star of the show, and it, and yeah. that's when the 1020 was making significantly better pictures than the iPhone was. Now, I think the iPhone takes great pictures. As we said last week, you know, look at this picture, look at that picture. You couldn't tell the difference between those that were iPhone and those that weren't mm -hmm. DSLR. Um, uh, so, there's an awful lot of good stuff going on with um, uh, with the iPhone. That I'm I'm a really really good camera. I might walk away again, but. I don't know that it, it would be to buy the basic device to take the pictures. It wouldn't be necessarily to stick a card in it. And it, to be my phone, I would only put a data card in to send them to the cloud just to form yeah. a, a criteria. But I mean, that that is somewhat a different use case. I mean, you're you're thinking about it from a business perspective and that, that is a great tool for your business. Mm -hmm. I think that's different. But I think ultimately you would also would be curious to simply see the operating system, see how everything is. I mean, even if you don't, if you, if you never stick a SIM card in it, you still would be curious to just have this device and see it. And uh, I'm guessing with the Windows, with the Windows phone, it was the same thing that, I mean, ultimately, yeah, it was a great camera, but it was, you also were a little bit curious curious to to simply experience when the the windows phone operating yeah, system i purely bought it through the camera that was that was the driving okay. impulse was there was the fact that it had got a camera that was 40 mm -hmm. 34 megapixels in the 1080 aspect in the you know the um the uh, what's the rate aspect ratio 16 by 9 aspect ratio that i was looking for mm -hmm. that, that's what drove me away from iphone because what it was doing okay. at the time i'd had the 4s and I'd had a go with the five in a camera shot in um, in the Apple Store, and the five wasn't producing good enough images to match the mm. twenty, not by a long stretch. And I I ended up buying two ten twenties, um, and the wife had the nine three five, which was another really good camera. But but again, Nokia have lost their well, not Nokia, Microsoft have lost their way. No, that was that was a Nokia. The nine three five was a Nokia, yeah, yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, but now Microsoft have, have completely lost their way. They they yep. I, th I think they should have pursued the high end camera angle, they, they and they the would have got more sales. Yeah. But now it's all gone completely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 what are we doing next? I've got the story lined up. It is this one. The iPad Mini is a goner. Oh, gotcha. Um, allegedly, uh, the iPad Mini is being discontinued completely. Um, mm -hmm. It will be removed from everything around the WDC point. WWDC point. Um, uh, there's no timeline necessarily, but um, suggestions are that it will go out at WWDC. Uh, and the 10.5 iPad Pro that will be introduced in, its, in the keynote on the 5th of June uh, could be the one that replaces it and sees the end of it. Mm -hmm. So you'll only get right. these three iPads, then you'll have a 12.9, a 10.5, and a 9.7 low cost option for schools. Yeah, I'm, to be honest, I'm fairly happy about that. I mean, I said I said it last year. Was it last year when they last updated the or when they last showed the entire lineup? I mean, not the the latest one, but where they introduced the iPad Pro. Was it last year or the year before? Year before. Was it year before even? Yeah. Uh, I said back then that there are too many app, too many iPads in the lineup. I, I think it's six or seven different ones. I mean, different sizes and and all, and the old ones and new ones and everything. Um, I, I think that was getting to a point where it was really confusing. And the, I, the iPad Mini, my feeling is, I mean, now with the new one that they released in March, I think. Um, yeah, the, the the price bracket is also very 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 thin, or the the price difference between I mean the the big big iPhone and 
um, the the iPad, the, the the iPad. I think it's just called. Right? The only thing yeah. I'd say though, Patrice, is that you've got no kids, and I don't mean that disrespectfully. True. It's just the, yeah. the iPad Mini is a great kids, ca- uh, you know, great kids camera, great kids uh, <laughs> device. Mm-hmm. You, you give them the iPad Mini, and they go off, and they're perfectly happy playing. Uh, uh, we farm on it or something like that or uh, yeah. uh, conquest or or any other kind of, of stuff where they can just leave it they do a bit and then they leave it overnight to get credit so that they can come back the following day and finish it off my two have both got iPad minis and they love them on car journeys they play with them constantly um, and like I said they, you know, they get to the games where you have to wait for get XP to then carry mm. on and they work but, fine I mean that's definitely a valid point the question for me would be, is that due to the size or due to the price? Both. I think I think if you look at the um, the analogy, do you remember the uh, the 2DS that came out? Mm-hmm. You had the 3DS for Nintendo, which was the, the all shebang gaming thing. And then you had the 2DS came out, which was just a block that only did the 2D view, but it used all the 3DS games. And they yeah. sell. They sold. They were ninety nine pounds. I bought two. I went out and bought two instantly. One red, one blue for the two kids. There you go. That's for car journeys. Away you go. I was happy as Larry when they did that. And I, I love the iPad Mini for kids. I would uh, if, if the kids said, "Oh, I've b- dropped it. I've smashed the screen. What should I do?" I would buy two more iPad Minis in a heartbeat. There is a market there. I, I, I just, mm. I'm not going to buy them at a nine point seven because that's you know the, the money's bigger. Is it really that much? I mean, what's what's it's the enough. price for the current iPad Mini? Let's have a look. There's a place where you can check that. It's called the Apple Store. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, apparently. You've <laughs> got this Apple Store thing. Let me have a look. I don't think, I think it is. Why is it reasonable difference? I mean, they they lowered the price for the. I mean, with the with the latest release, so I'm I'm not sure there is too much of a difference. Uh, let's have a look. iPad twenty four. Yeah, twenty four ninety nine. D Pen is saying 128 gig Wi Fi, uh, both sizes is 10 pounds difference. Oh, okay, so. maybe then. So the kids are about to get an upgrade. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I could see the argument on the size to say, I mean, especially if your children are somewhat younger and smarter, uh, the smaller iPad probably is simply easier to handle for them. You can uh, only but, get a 128 mini, says Paul. It's a, it's a bit it's a bit more than that. It's four hundred and nineteen for an iPad Mini four and for the nine point seven it's five hundred and forty nine. Because the iPad that they got there is three three nine, that's been got rid of as well, isn't it? That's going as well. It's the iPad Pro they're keeping, isn't it? Well no, so, no, that, no, no. no 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 no. So you've got you've got the pro so the pro that you've got, I think, is obsolete as well. That's going to be the ten point five. Then you've got the twelve inch, and then you've got the uh, nine point seven, which is basically an, I, uh, an iPad Air, two. yeah, and that's it. So the Mini's going to disappear. It'll just be an iPad Air two. Yeah. And Paul Dixon is saying right now you can only get a one twenty eight gig Mini. So I mean, they have reduced the the SKUs. The line has gone. Yeah. Yeah. No question. The 12 is brilliant. I love my 12. And uh, one mm-hmm. of the things that's going to happen uh, this year is my mum is, is their, their computer's coming to an end. It's 2005 um, uh, iMac, 21 inch yeah. iMac. And it, it, it's really coming to the end of its usable life. Um, and I thought they could have my iPad Pro and that would do everything for them. It would be perfect. Yeah. It does absolutely anything that they need. Um, and it would be far easier to use more intuitive uh, in terms of interface than, than, the, than, than the Mac is. More, uh, less ability to completely screw it up as well, which is another issue. Less maintenance for you. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I want to say as well this week, uh, I eventually got to the bottom. I've, I've got an iMac. So here's the thing. I, I bought an iMac years ago, 2007 iMac. And I sold it to a guy I went to uni with to do my law degree. Uh, Matt and he said I finished with it 
um, do you want it? And I'm like, yeah, I'll buy it back. So I bought it back off him for half as much. <laughs> so I sold it in for 500 quid. I paid for two grand for it. I sold it in for 500 quid and I bought it back for 250. Um, and I've sat, it's sat in the office here for two years for me waiting to start it up because I just, I've got, I must do the Mac, I must do the iMac. This week, I've got all the jobs done that I wanted to do in the office, and I got it done. And I managed to finally put Mavericks onto it. And I gotta say, I was really impressed because it, it like my mum's has got, um, uh, my mum's has only got Snow Leopard on it, and mm -hmm. not Snow Leopard, uh, Mountain Lion on it, and it's slow. It's really slow. It cannot manage it at all. But um, uh, Mount, uh, Mavericks runs brilliantly. Uh, it is snappy and it's fast and it runs really, really well. Great job on the OS for for Apple, uh, yeah. for the older legacy equipment. But unfortunately, that's as far as I can go because I can't get Yosemite on it because it, it's obsolete at that point. So, yeah. But it's a good and it works just fine. We've got it playing music in the other room and it's just good as gold. Uh, yeah. Iovine talking to music. See what I did there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Jimmy Irvine says that Apple Music would have 4 million subscribers if it had a free version like Spotify rather than just the paid version only. I don't know if, is this, like, is Jimmy going to wake up with a horse's head in his bed here if he's not careful? Because that sounds a little bit off message, doesn't it? Um, I think, I mean, hmm, I, I mean, one, he's, he's probably right. I mean, free, people will oh, simply no, sign up. Right. Yeah. Because why not? So he's probably right, but uh, I, I don't I don't get where where he's getting at with that. I mean, yeah, but so what? I mean, would you rather have I don't know forty million paying subscribers or four hundred not paying ones? So have what's the point? How many supported adverts? Mm, well, I don't. I, I mean. Given Apple's track record with ads, uh, I, I mean, not ads they produce themselves, but ads they let people put on their platform, uh, I don't think that's a good idea. Well, he doesn't think either, because actually what he said is he's not aligned with that idea. Yeah. Uh, he says, I put my money where my mouth is, Beats Music didn't have a free tier, Apple doesn't have a free tier, I'm not just talking it, I'm walking it. That's why I aligned with Eddie and Tim and Steve. They thought the same way. I think that's what's going on with free music is wrong. I yep. just do. So he doesn't want it to have it. He just says, well, you'd have 4 million subscribers if you had a free, a, a free model. But is that a bit of income that Apple's missing out on? Or is it, or because there's not, there's only 20 million odd subscribers, isn't there, for um, uh, for Apple Music? It's not massive. Yeah. That, 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 it's not a yeah, lot. Yeah, but, but Spotify it, it, is not it, that much bigger, right? No, exactly. It's a lot in relative comparisons to yeah. everyone else. Don't get me wrong. But in terms of the reach that Apple's got and what they could have, yes. it's not as big as they could I have. Thinking how many iOS devices out there? That's only twenty million. That, that is awful. It's not. It's not massive yeah, it's in terms of quantity of reach. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's. I'm. I'm pretty sure iTunes is way, way bigger than than that. I mean, they have a couple of. Uh, I think oh, at least a billion device iOS devices. I think they they released that number at some point. Um, so, I mean, they have probably a, a, a active devices, so they have probably a, a billion users at least. Um, so 20 million is, well, next to nothing. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. in terms, uh, again, this is, the, this is one of the conversations we have all the time, is what small peanuts for Apple is big peanuts for everyone else. Yes, um, <laughs> true. Uh, but uh, if there's such a thing as big peanuts. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but you would have thought, given the penetration that Apple could have, Mm -hmm. that mark is fairly low so yeah and the the marketing pool that they have i mean they can they can advertise to their own customers and that's always a bigger pull than anybody else can have because they have to even reach the people first to to even advertise to them and apple can simply do it by sending out an email to all to all customers or something or just putting it on the itunes storefront Stuff like that, or putting it up front and center to, uh, on their next event. So for them, marketing is e is is easier. So, so I, I, it, yeah, music is September, is it not traditionally? Um, yeah, Things with the iPhone music usually. iPhone music based stuff is all together in September. So yeah, we'll wait and see. Uh, Apple is going to announce new MacBook, MacBook Pro, and possible MacBook Air. Rumored. 
at WWDC. They'll have the Kaby Lake processors on them uh, and an update from the Skylake processors on the current machines. Um, uh, only internal updates other than that will be applied to it. Mm -hmm. uh, no word on price. No word if this isn't true. But the, the MacBook Air one I thought sounded quite interesting. That's, that's surprising. I thought the MacBook Air was basically dead. I mean, with the new MacBook they released a couple of years ago and the Pros getting, I mean, thinner and lighter and everything, I, I simply don't see a compelling reason for the Air to exist. It was, I mean, back in the day when it was announced, when it, when it was introduced. Right. It was the thinnest and lightest and... and so so most, bear, bear, yeah. with, bear with me on this, right? Yeah. What was the one machine that when they discontinued, everyone went, do you know what? I really love that form factor. Yeah. No. Hmm. Oh, the old MacBook. The MacBook, MacBook. It was the 12 inch. The 12, and I, I'm, I'm, I'll hold my hand up. I lusted after the 12 inch form factor. I always wanted mm -hmm. the 12 inch back. And thanks to Rick, um, I, I got mine. He gave me his 12 inch left over. <laughs> Rick gave me his 12 inch. There we go. There's a <laughs> There's a, there's a show title, uh, but he, <laughs> Rich gave me his, uh, Rich Corson, if you're listening, thanks very much, man. Um, he gave me his 12 inch and I love it. And it ran the green screen on the old office for a very long mm -hmm. time. Um, uh, now that was a form factor that everyone lusted for. And I think that the air has got a certain kind of uh, appeal in that kind of ideal of, of something that's really thin that you just, snap together drop in your bag and if you look at yeah. the macbook it's vastly uncompared to uh, underpowered compared to the air and people want the power that goes along with it i still love my 11 inch air i've got it in my bag behind yeah. me here i use it all the time at home and it does so much with i do i do the photo league on it when i'm sat in front of the tv i've got it up and i open it up and i scroll through everything mm -hmm. and uh, i think i think there's a love for that form factor because it's like the 12 inch, you know, he's brought this thing out and everyone's going, oh, I love that. And how they're whipping it away and going, no, 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 don't do that. It's cheap as chips, isn't it? I think that's that's it. I mean, the price, the, the, the power I could Apple see doing with the MacBook. I mean, if they updated the, the MacBook, then I, I don't think power would be the big issue, but price might be. Yeah, I, I don't need a MacBook Pro. I just don't need it. Yeah. A uh, MacBook Air. Yeah. I mean, the, it's, it's, it's kind of an amazing story. The MacBook Air was the, I think, most one of the most expensive, or I think even the most expensive Mac back when it was what, introduced, or at least in the, from, from the MacBook line, at least. Yeah, but when you, you pull a computer um, it's out the cheapest, from an envelope, so. yeah, when you pull a whole computer out from an envelope, then people go, ooh, yeah. and it was massive at the time. Yeah, exactly. So now it's the cheapest one. And I think that's the that Mac is probably the one that's still selling the most. At least I would guess. I mean, Apple is not releasing any numbers, but I would guess simply by how many I've seen and the price that that it's the, the most popular one. That so still. is is my MacBook, uh, my 11-inch MacBook Air. Um, it is it is super small. Next to me, especially. It's invisible, isn't it? Um, <laughs> that too. Uh, <laughs> It's perfect for just doing emails at home and doing basic stuff like the Fantasy Photo League. And uh, I absolutely adore this machine. I do mm -hmm. not want rid of it. It's got a one terabyte hard drive in it. It's got the maximum processor in a, uh, that you could buy at the time. I mean, this is a MacBook Air that cost me 1,500 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, you know, it's not, it, it's not basic. But I just love the size of it. I stick it in the in the bag, and off I go down to London on the train, and I can yeah. put my AirPods into it, and I, I adore it. I absolutely adore it. I, I, I yeah. think there is a real love of the form factor. But, but that, the but, but, care is what I actually got my brother-in-law to buy because I was doing a lot of, um, should we say, um, trying to fix his laptop all the time. And I said, just, just get this. Yeah. And I got the basic air, and it's brilliant. Uh, yeah. Paul Dixon is saying the problem with the air is it doesn't have a written display. I don't care. No, that doesn't bother me in the slightest. Yeah, no, I don't want it for that. Either. It wouldn't yeah. uh, uh, I, still it, got his it doesn't. Watch. It probably doesn't bother you, but I'm pretty sure it does bother Apple, and it definitely does bother developers because they still have to include all the One X uh, assets. So I, I'm. I, I, I think it would be the world would be easier if if the non retina screens disappeared at this point. And I mean, I want to I want to I want to put one or add one thing to the conversation. We talked about the iPad. 
if I think if the MacBook Air went away, then the iPad Pro would be the logic, or the iPad or the iPad Pro would be the most logic replace, logical replacement for that. And then they, they need to make a cheaper one, they need an entry level one. Yeah, but I mean the the entry or the entry level iPad is way cheaper than the entry level MacBook Air. Yeah, but what if you want to compare? Yeah, but. The, the, that's the question. How, I mean, if you if if you go if you as a user go or as a consumer go out there and you want to buy a machine or something you can use uh, that's cheap and doesn't have too much power because I mean all you're doing is email and web surfing and maybe a game now and then, uh, then the iPad would be fine for that. So, so uh, Paul's saying in the chat room, the MacBook needs to get cheaper. I don't think it does. I think it needs no. to get more powerful. That's the problem yes. with the MacBook. Is it's, it's underpowered in comparison to what the Air can deliver. Um, I mean, you look at that Air there, and it is at least at equal, and it's how many years old? Uh, 2014, I bought that to go to Macworld with, and it's at, le it's at least more powerful than the current MacBook Air. The MacBook, mm -hmm. sorry, the MacBook. Yeah. Uh, and the surface is in that price range now. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to get one of them. Moving on. Uh, the Bash is coming up. Yes, are you coming to the Bash? Patrice is. He's coming all yes. the way from Journey, you lazy bastards. All you've got to do <laughs> is come down the road from wherever you are in the UK to Birmingham. It's £20 for adults and it's £5 for kids. And uh, it's the most fun you'll have with your clothes on in a great deal of time. We've got Hungry Hippos. We've got the tight game. We've got a load of new games coming as well as that'll be really embarrassing for you. You'll be on the video for next year. Muller Cam will be there as well, I'm sure. And uh, we'll have a great time. There's a video over at YouTube. If you go into uh, YouTube and type uh, British Tech Network The Bash, you'll find it and have a watch of all the fun that we had last week. It was yeah. absolutely brilliant. Um, Muller's saying you don't have to keep your clothes on in the chat room, but yes, you do. Okay, so um, <laughs> oh, uh, there'll be children pleasant, but, um, <laughs> but there you go. Uh, it was an absolutely fantastic week. Uh, or yeah, week it was. Week. It was really, really good, and the whole weekend. So it starts on Friday. We've got um, we've got eight uh, places on the Forest of Arden Golf Club. If you want to come and have a game of golf on the Friday, you can do. Um, there's eight slots to fill. We've got four of those slots filled already, so there's another four slots to fill if you want to come along and play. Um, uh, Patrice is holding the beer. Um, uh, and then Patrice should play, because me and him could play each other, because we don't play golf. No, that's right. Yeah, you play <laughs> me. I don't play golf, mate. Moving on. Friday afternoon, <laughs> then, we've got the curry. Starts at 5 o'clock over at the Kismet. Uh, there'll be a, a curry there for everyone to get into. There'll be starters and that kind of stuff, and then uh, you order your main courses off the menu, and there's beer all the way along. And then it's all back to mine for for, um, uh, loads more fun. Uh, then on the Saturday we've got the bash itself God down at the the, uh, the link, and then back to mine after that for a, an ordering curry from Kismet again, like we did last year. And then Sunday yep. it's bacon sandwiches at my house and dinner in the afternoon and a barbecue. And then you can all go home Sunday evening, or you can just stay over and go home Monday morning. It's entirely up to you, bright and early, uh, your choice. Uh, Righty boy and all those guys, they come on, they do Saturday, Sunday. So Righty's there on the Monday with us all. So it should be really, really good. Patrice, when are you flying home? The Tuesday? Uh, no, Monday uh, evening. Evening, I have to good be choice, back. good choice. Yeah, 6 p.m., I think. Evening, that's the way to do it, yeah. definitely. And the Fancy Photo League is still running. If you want to join in that, we've had a couple of people extra join this week again. Uh, it's May. The topic is Edge. E-D-G-E. -E, edge. Echo Delta Golf. Echo. Um, uh, anything to do with Edge, that's the brief for the month that you have to follow. Uh, send your images in to britishchatnetwork at gmail.com and we will include them in the... Uh, the competition. Uh, if you'd like to join, just send us an email as well and we'll tell you all the things that you can do to join the Slack room and then get all of the updates and that kind of stuff. Um, it's a really simple format. Uh, I've got to say a lot of people are loving it at the moment. They're really enjoying it. Yes. The topics are, are broad. I've deliberately done it so that there's people can go, oh, that's a really tough one. And then actually when they think about it, they come up with a lot of different ideas. The diversity of image for last month was massive for season. Yes. It was yeah, I mean, there there were some that were fairly similar and obvious, but there were also a lot of, I mean, a lot of different ideas, really different ideas where you thought, hey, this is this is a cool idea. I mean, 
it's and, and that's I think that's what it's about. This is why it's fun to see how people think about an, a broad topic like this, what they come up with, and what crazy ideas they might have. Doc still hasn't submitted an image though. He's afraid. <laughs> I reckon he's checking. But we've got two more people in. Yes. Wendell, to those people that have asked, uh, do come in. Uh, UK2 support us. Please support them. They're absolutely superb. Uh, go to BritishTechNetwork.com forward slash sponsors and you get all the offer codes that UK2 offer to everybody who listens to the network. Um, uh, we wouldn't be afloat without them. The amount of bandwidth that we consume every month is massive from everyone listening to us. Um, we've had a review this week from someone who, who left a rather unpleasant review and actually sent a rather unpleasant email email as well <laughs> and I'm not going to read it out and they'll and they're going to go well you didn't read it out because you're a complete arsehole just like I said you were um but actually I'm not reading it out because it was just personal just an attack on me and everyone else you don't like us that's fair enough move on but um uh, but I'm afraid that that uh, he said he did say in his in his in his email he said um <laughs> you and the four other listeners <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, he did accuse me of being a communist yes effectively <laughs> apparently we're all a bunch of lefties which yes. <laughs> obviously he's a fascist but never mind <laughs> so, so um, uh, uh, he left a really nasty review in the, uh, in the US store so if you want to read it go and have a watch and then tell him he's a complete twat because he is um, uh, uh, we've had some other reviews as well um, uh, Obnoxious Host, that's the title of it that's me, apparently and also, what's not to like the highest production values and most professional team members that there are <laughs> has to be the British Tech Podcast out there, and surely I've not missed it a lot, uh, a lot. Um, seriously, I love the show keep up the banter and random sound issues adds to the show thank you Skoda Boy that's very kind, mate. <laughs> <laughs> There's more than four people in the chat room. Good point. I hadn't thought of that. And Hoyer. Hoyer are here. Um, uh, if you want the Avantech lenses, the ones that I'm wearing at the moment, and Mo uh, Muller wears regularly, then you can get them. Here we go. But... Yaniko is coming. The date is approaching. I will be going to Wrexham. We will be filming it. There will be loads of fun had, and we will have a unique pair of glasses at the end of it. Uniku, that's what it is. Japanese for unique. Um, I've been in, and got measured. Um, I've got to go and get measured again, apparently, because that was just like a, a test thing that was there for just demonstration purposes. But I will go get myself measured, have my lenses fitted, and then they will print them off for me, and I will be able to take them away. They'll be so unique that I'll have my initials, which I'm going to, I've asked for my initials to be BTN, of course. They'll be on the inside of the stem of the glasses, so it should be awesome. Uh, uh, Jake, now that Jake works for me, is going to be coming up with me, and we're going to have a great time, and we're going to film it all, and it's going to look absolutely brilliant. It'll be great. I can't wait to do it. Yaniko is coming, people. Stay focused. Watch this space. Watch this space. Time for the cool thing. Start us off. Patrice. Okay, my cool thing this time is an app called Dropshare. Uh, Drop um, it's one of those, I think there are a couple, it's one of those uh, link slash file sharing apps where you can basically drop an image or a file or whatever uh, onto a little widget and it will it will upload it somewhere and will give you a link that you can then post, uh, for example, in our chat room or in a Slack room. Um, the nice thing about Dropshare is one, it comes with setup, and I've put a link to sign up for setup uh, in the chat room. Yep. Um, so if you have a setup uh, subscription, you can get it. And the other thing I really liked is that it's really flexible. I mean, uh, you don't have to upload it to their servers. You can you can upload it to Amazon S3, to Backblaze, to your own server, to Google Drive. Um, there's another one I forgot. Uh, doesn't matter. There, there are a couple of options. You can you can I mean use your own solution, upload it via SSH to your own server for example that's what i'm doing um and it's really easy i mean it's, it's easy to use it's easy to install and uh it works i tried it a couple of times it really it really does work and as i said if you have a setup subscription then uh, it already comes with it so, so um, that's set, why i tried it now, now setup is nine dollars 99 a month which everyone's gonna suck in at and go steady on 
you get 75 applications. Yeah. And, well, okay, you're and, not going to use all of those, but 75 applications for, for $9.99 a month is nothing. It's nothing. And, I mean, it's 75 great applications. Um, things like, I mean, Marked, for example, from, from Brett and um, MoneyVis and, and so many other really great apps. The it's, only problem you've got is that, of course, seventy nine dollars a month is a, is the equivalent of four thousand pounds in Brexit dollars. <laughs> At least uh, this week. This week. Politics. It could get worse. Uh, Muller, <laughs> first ever pick on the Mac show. What are you going to pick? Well, because I've only invited on within five minutes. For now, I'm just going to, have to go for me hump. Muller likes a hump. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I bought a. Uh, I bought this uh, iPhone 7 and I've just bought the battery hump and uh, I know it's not a new, a new a new thing but I'm actually very impressed with this. Ellis is very impressed because he wants one and do you know what? Because I told him. No. <coughs> do you know what this has spurred Ellis into? Oh, right. Ellis has decided to start a car washing business on the strength of seeing your hump because he wants a hump. So uh -huh. he's gone out and he started washing cars in the local area. He made 30 quid on Sunday. So, uh, nice. Little on maybe I should her. maybe I should bring my car by. <laughs> yeah, you, you should. What, I've got a black room on tomorrow when we're at the wasp game. Then talking about the car wash. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the, the hump. The hump. You can only get it for the seven though. You can't get it for the seven S, no, can you? I've got a seven. I, I know. I, I know. It's a plus six plus user before, but I just think I just thought oh, it was so bulky, and I decided I'm going to go for the seven. And the girl that served me going, oh, you got 14 days or whatever, you can get back and get the 7 plus like you could have, you're going to do. And to be honest with you, I'm happy with the 7. I am, really am happy with the yeah, 7. Yeah, no good. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and the hump actually means the battery lasts all day. In fact, it can last, uh, it probably won't last all day tomorrow because of the, of the rugby, but it lasts, the, the hump itself drives it all day on a normal day. And then... Uh, on a bad day, I might use the, the phone as well, but I'm impressed with the battery life with the hump. Excellent, mate. Uh, what is the battery life, and what what sort of time are we talking? <sighs> well, I'm quite a heavy user at times. So if I'm if I'm using it heavily, uh, like yesterday, I, I was at a, on a course and I was using it quite a lot to take notes, uh, and the hump didn't run out of battery until ten o'clock at night. And I, last time I went to the rugby, the first game, the the last game against Saracens, I was using it to take video of the crowd and that. Uh, I used the hump, and I got home and I used the phone as well. So I used it quite extensively all day in the pub uh, and during the game, and got home with about 20% 20 percent battery life. So I don't know time wise, but good ten hours of heavy use. So. I'm very impressed with that hump thing. Excellent. Good one. Uh, we've had another review that's come in as well today, which oh, yeah. is superb. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, hang on. Hang on. What have I clicked? Oh, here we go. I'm back. And it's Tom. <laughs> He's put a great listen. If you're an Apple fan, guests are knowledgeable with some good humour mixed in and a great insight with a likable host. <laughs> So the complete opposite. Thank you very much. Cheers, man. Great knowledge. Uh, I've only just picked that one up. Um, uh, my cool thing, and I watched it last night, it's absolutely brilliant. I really enjoyed it. It's Live By Night. Um, now, Patrick Quirk, who's in our Slack room and who is also in the chat room today, his sister... Uh, does film Antonia Quirk does uh, the the film show here in the UK, Film Twenty Seven Teen, and um, she thought it was crap. I think. But I've got to disagree. Um, I described it yesterday. It's a slow boiling drama. And Sharon said, That sounds like it's boring. And I said, Okay, what about simmering? She went, That's good. So it's a simmering drama about Prohibition America and uh, Ben Affleck's character. Apparently, he wrote this as well as. Um, and it's brilliant. I really enjoyed it. It's. Uh, it's good stuff. It, I don't want to give too much away, but it's Affleck is really good in it, and the character he plays, you kind of sit and think all the time, oh, God, how's he going to get out of this? How's he going to get out of this? What's he going to do here? And some of the crap that he pulls is just unbelievable. Um, and there's, a, there's, a, there's not a twist at the end. I actually saw it coming, but it's... Uh, 
it's a good story. There is a twist in terms of, of the the picture that you're looking at now with him holding a gun with a silencer on it, but um, uh, it's a great film. I really enjoyed it. Really well worked, well spent money, unlike Independence Day Insurgents. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes. <laughs> There's a tenor of me life in two and a half hours I ain't ever going to get back. Bastard. Where can we get a hold of you, Patrice? That's the well, is, that, is that the ice cream wagon in the background? I, I don't think so. I thought it's I not just here. an ice cream wagon in the background. Okay, go on. Um, as always, you can find me every week here on The Mech Show and everything I do on thepatrice.com. Excellent, mate. Thank you for coming along today. Um, uh, Muller, where are you, mate? Uh, you'll probably never find me on this show again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fulfilled, but now it's gone. <laughs> Unless I buy an Apple Watch and then they'll take they bring me on just to take the mic. Uh, uh, ah. I'm on the big show quite a lot. I do uh, reviews on the every so often on the website, and I'm on Muller Biker at uh, on, on Twitter. Excellent. Yeah. And most importantly, never click a link Muller posts. Oh, that's how I order, man. That's the <laughs> truth, man. My name is Ian Rankin. Get me out of your ranking on Twitter. We'll be back again next week on Friday as normal with the Max Show. And uh, then we're not going to do that on the following week uh, because I'm away, unfortunately. We'll be back for the uh, the keynote, but I think I'm going to be down at London Mac User Group on the keynote because I've got a meeting in London that day. So uh, you might, we might not see you for two weeks after that, but we'll hear next Friday. There's no question of that. Uh, have a great weekend. Book your bash ticket, please, if you possibly can, because I've got to say yay or nay on the venue on the 1st of June. If I don't, then I'm liable for the whole charge regardless. And um, uh, uh, there'll still be an event. There'll still be something happening. It just won't be at the link is all I'm saying. So if you're going to come, please book your ticket now as soon as you possibly can. See you next week. Thanks for listening.